a covenant keeping God. So God is committed to keeping his own part of the agreement. So one thing about a covenant is that there are two sides of it. There is God's side and there's man's. And we know that God never fails. You know, I mean, we didn't ask him. He did. He made that covenant with us. He promised us. The Bible says that as he said it, will he not do it? You know, so prosperity is a covenant between us and God. And God is always committed to fulfilling his own part. But we also have our part to pay, play. And that is where the issue always is. A lot of time you run to God and say, God, why are you not blessing me? God, why are you not prospering? God, why are you not increasing me? God, why are you not doing this? And we make God to seem like a liar. We read the scripture. The Bible is very clear about what his promises are. And we begin to wonder that God, but this is what your word says. Why am I not seeing this thing? Why is it not made manifest in my life? I'm a Christian. I serve God. I've done everything. But I'm still not seeing. And that is one of the first mistakes we make when it comes to prosperity, because we are trying to do everything to qualify for that which God has provided by grace. So great prosperity is one of the things that God has provided to us by grace. Grace means unmerited favor. It means you don't deserve it. You know, so someone will say, if I don't deserve it, you know, then how come? I mean, you know, but if I don't deserve it. It means that the, nothing should hinder me from receiving it. Yeah, that is true. But that is just half of it. You know, the Bible said that we're saved by grace through faith. So faith is important as well in receiving all that God has provided for us. Faith is important to receive all that God has provided for us by grace. And that's why we are talking about faith. Because faith is key to receiving everything that God has for us. And we're going to look at a couple of scriptures tonight and break that down. All right. So we start out with, um, all right. So types of prosperity, you know, biblical prosperity is beyond, is beyond just, um, is beyond just financial. A lot of time when we talk about prosperity, our focus is always on financial prosperity, but biblical prosperity based on the Bible is, is, is not solely focused on material wealth, but rather is holistic is broader than that financial is just a section of it's just a fraction of it so we call there's what we call relational relation uh, relational prosperity and this is prosperity it refers to the quality and health of your interpersonal relationship it has to do with the quality of your relationship if you if and if if you're if you're running a business or if you you know work in a, a large enterprise in a large organization you will know that a relationship is key. And that's what Pastor Victor talked about yesterday. The quality of relationship has a major role in your financial prosperity. So two things, there's financial prosperity, then there's also relational prosperity. Now they are connected. The quality of your relationship, you know, in Nigeria, we call it connections. And apparently even in America as well, it's key, it's central. Who do you know? You know, so the quality of relationship is important, but beyond just who we know, we're also we're, we're speaking not just about people connection, but in, in the area of business, but also your family members as well. Family is also key to financial prosperity as well. Family, so relational prosperity basically has to the quality of relationship, your family, the quality of friends you have, your colleagues, um, community members, you know, the connection with them, the love relationship with your husband and your wife. You know, and you're even in your area of profession and business as well. You know, so Joseph, for instance, was in prison, but he had connection. There was a butler, there was a baker, you know, there was a prison guard. You know, and we see several examples of people in the Bible that had quality relationship. You know, even Joseph was described as being prosperous because of the quality of the relationship. So we have what we call relational prosperity. You know, and the Bible says that blessed is a man who squeezes. So we're talking about children now. The Bible says that children are a blessing from the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about a wife that he will find a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So the Bible says that finding a good wife is, you know, it's a manifestation of the favor of God. You know, so for some of us, maybe it's not the finances. For some, for some of us, it might be that relational prosperity. It might with the quality of our relationships and our, our, the our relationships are not quality enough. You know, because you might have all the money, but trust me, if you have a, if your children are misbehaving, you know, thank God for the Tokubo family, what God is doing for them. You know what God is doing. You know, with the parents and the children. Uh, you know that there is nothing like. 
a, 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 when a child is following the way, that is that is a joy of every father. That is the best thing a father can do to the children, to train up the children in the way that it should go. You know, so for someone tonight, I want you to key into relational prosperity tonight. Maybe there's a, maybe in your, you need that connection. You need, maybe you're struggling in your relationship, connect with it and because we're going to pray. All right, so let's move on. Also, we have, so basically relational prosperity will deepen your connections and your bond will increase your sense of belonging in community, you know, would, you know, provide increased joy and happiness in your life as well. And this is very essential to career advancement and personal growth. When you have, when, when you know, the key, one of the keys to succeeding, you know, a lot of time when it comes to getting promoted at work, it's just beyond, sometimes it's beyond your technical ability. Sometimes it's your interpersonal relationship, your ability to relate with people and the quality of people that God connects you with. You know, so maybe all you've been doing is praying, God, I need money, I need money, I need money. There is more to financial prosperity. There's also relational prosperity. We're going to pray about the people around you. Like I said, I run a business in Nigeria. And one of the things I always pray about, whenever I need money, I prayed for my customers. I prayed for my clients. I pray for them that God will prosper them. God will increase them. I pray for more open doors, opportunities, that God will bring me in connection with people that would help me to get to that desired goal. Because I know that the money that I need is in the hands of people. So my prayer was always that God connect me with people that would, you know, that that have needs. I have I have a service to provide. They have a need, you know. And once we make that connection, but also you can meet those people. And if on your part you are not playing your part well as well, you know, there can be some disruptions there as well. All right. So let's move on. Um, other types of then also what we call pro, um, spiritual prosperity. We're very familiar with that as well. Um, the Bible says, um, third John 1 verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things now and be in health just as your soul prospers. So man is a tripartite being. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and lives in a body. Now, this scripture covers the three aspects of man. The first part says, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I pray that thou mayest prosper. The, the first part there is re referring to spiritual prosperity. And spiritual prosperity has to do with the quality of the relationship that you have with God. Spiritual uh, um, prosperity encompasses a deep relationship with God. Is not on the shallow end, deep in the sense that, you know, Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice. I know them. You know, that is the quality of relationship we're talking about, where you know God and God knows you and you hear his voice accurately. You can beat your chest and say, I am a child of God. There is no question. There is no doubt in your heart. You know, so spiritual prosperity is also key. And that is what that scripture was talking about. This, I wish about that you prosper in all things, in spiritual things, and also in health as your soul as well prosper. So we see three types of prosperity there as well. There's also emotional and physical prosperity and this just has to do with your physical well-being your health you know so emotional physical prosperity is has to do with your overall well-being your spirits your soul and your body your mind you know it has to do it's also connected to spiritual health as well it has to do with peace and joy you know, it has to be emotional resilience. It has to be healthy relationships. It has to be good health. It has to be the freedom from illness and disease as well. You know, so like we said, um, prosperity is just beyond finances, which is what usually I focus on. You know, so of course, we also have financial prosperity, which is a promise of God, which is a plan of God for us. Like we said, it's a covenant of God. And there are several scriptures that addresses that. So financial prosperity is a blessing from God. Um, Philippians 4, 19 says, and God will supply all my needs. Now, the needs there, every human being has three needs. You have physical needs, you have spiritual needs, you have emotional needs. It says all my needs, all my physical needs, all my spiritual needs, all my emotional, according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. We also see in Deuteronomy 1 verse 5, it says that you shall lend to many nations. Now, he's talking about money here now. He said you shall be lenders to nations and you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you head and not tail and shall be above and, and not be beneath. So he's talking about that being, that's economic empowerment. You know, the wealthy lend, the wealthy lend to the poorer nation. So you said you will be a lender to nation. It means that nations will come to you. You know, probably at some point, you know, Nigeria likes to borrow. Maybe at some point they will come to you. I, I mean, in actual fact, Nigeria is actually dependent on 
Nigerians in diaspora. I was, I was listening to um, a conversation, I think someone a few days ago, and they were talking about the amount of contributions that the people in diaspora is bringing into the economy as well. You know, so you can be an investor in that country. And that is what God is saying that you will be, you know, we, we, we might not call it lender. He talks about being an investor. You know, so we also see Proverbs 10, 22. It says the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Now, the blessing of the Lord is not riches, but the blessing of the Lord has the capacity to make you rich. So one of the, one of the manifestations of the blessing of God is riches. You know, so the blessing of God in self is spiritual. We'll also look at that. And it says that that blessing or that riches is one that does not give sorrow. You know, there's a saying, more money, more problem. But the blessing of the Lord does not give you more problem. It, it empowers you to rather to solve problems. The Bible says also, Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possession. So there's nothing wrong with having possession. But the Bible said that the key thing is that we must honor God with it because he's the one that gave them to us. All right? All right. So financial prosperity is key. Also, um, a, uh, another scripture there says, John 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes except to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. So the provisions of God are abundant. There is no question of scarcity. There is no scarcity in the kingdom of heaven. There is no God doesn't have enough. He's run out. You know, you know. Um, some of us have taken on. No, there is abundant provision for us. But the Bible said there's an enemy right out there. He's there to kill. He's, he wants to steal. He wants to destroy. And the Bible said that we must take our stand against that enemy. All right, there's also what we call social prosperity, and that has to do with your connections with your community as well, you know. And so now, so those five areas of prosperity, basically, they are all interconnected and they, they influence each other, you know. So one of them has an impact on the other, you know. Example, financial prosperity. Financial prosperity will impact your relational prosperity, you know. That means that, you know, when you have finances, you can have relational prosperity as well. You have you, it allows you to be able to when when you have financial prosperity as a father, you can take care of your children. You will send them to school debt free. You can take care of your family, you know, and you can have you know you also will attract good people as well. You will attract like minds as well, and you're able to also be a blessing to people in your community. Everybody wants to hang around the rich man, right? Everybody wants to hang hang around someone that has riches. No one wants to hang around a poor person because he has nothing to give. All he wants to do is connect. You see, at the end of the day, nothing good comes out of poverty. So poverty can never be the will of God. Put in the chat, poverty is not the will of God for my life. Poverty is not the will of God. Prosperity is God's will for my life. You know, put in the chat, I would never be poor because it is not the plan of God for your life. You know, so financial prosperity can also influence your social prosperity, um, social prosperity as well, availability of resources with finances. You have the you can take advantage of opportunities. I was talking to some teenagers and I asked the lady, I said, give me a, a one a, give me a one million dollar idea. And she had a fantastic idea. You know, she had a fantastic idea and you know, brilliant idea, but then you know, the opportunity is a different factor entirely. So you might have the, the, the idea, but you might not have the resources to execute that opportunity. Some people have the resources, you know, they don't have the opportunities, you know, to use that resources to increase, you know. So basically we're saying that all of them are all interconnected. So we need, a, we need the totality of them. All right. All right. Now, next is, there's a connection between the knowledge of God and prosperity. I was reading a couple of scriptures and I began to see the connection between knowing God. So basically, there's a connection between knowing God and prospering. You know, and that is the advantage and a benefit that all of us have. And that is one thing we should be grateful for and take advantage of. There's a connection. All right, let's look at a few scriptures. Number one, it says, God says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. So the first thing says, abide in me and my word. So how, how, how do you abide in him by his word abiding in him? Because God and his word are one. You know, Bible in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So when you abide in the word, abide means to fellowship in the word, to stay on the word, to study the word, to meditate on the word. God says, if you abide in my, my words abide, then you will ask what you desire. Obviously, that desire is going to be influenced by the word. 
you know, if you stay in the mud, you know, and you come out of the mud, you know, everything you do will be covered with mud. When you stay in the word and you abide in the word, when you ask, that desire will be in line with the word of God or God will influence your desire. And the Bible says that, and it shall, and whatever you desire shall be done. Whatever you desire in accordance to his word. So when you stay in the word, God puts his desire in you. And that is what happens when we study the Bible. God gives us revelation, gives us insight. He tells us, he puts desires in us. And whatever desire that God puts in you, God will always back that desire. And that is the only desire that he backs. You know, if you desire to, you know, a man who desires to marry um, so, uh, uh, someone else's, you know, someone else's wife, obviously God is not going to honor that desire. He says, oh, God, but God said if I desire, no, that is not in line with the will and the plan of God. That is a satanic desire. God will not honor that. Desire. But if that desire is in connect, if, but if God puts it, so when we read the word and study the word, ask God, to, you know, what, are, what do you desire? God, put your desire because that is what God will back. All right, 2 Peter 1 verse 2 says, grace and peace be multiplied. I mean, we know our math, addition 2 plus 2, you know, we, we know our maths very well. Multiplication is abundance. So I would say grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. When we read it from, I like to read the Bible, not up, backwards, you know. So through the knowledge of God, grace and peace will be multiplied to you. So someone says, I need grace. I need peace. Study the word of God. Get into the word of God. You see, the word of God there is not limited to the Bible, but what God is saying as well. You know, there are two words that are described the word of God. One is logos, which is a written word. Another one is rema, which is a spoken word. The spoken word is the revealed word of God. You know, so when we say the word of God here or knowledge, if I'm not just restricting it to just reading your Bible, because someone might say, how can reading my Bible, you know, help me to become the next in the, the next Elon Musk, how can I become? Where I can I become a billionaire by reading? When you read in the Bible, you know more about God. You know more about yourself. You know God begins to put certain desires in you. You know you you develop your human spirit. You develop your capacity to receive from God, and God begins to share secrets with you. And when you execute those secrets, you have the backing of God, and then there's prosperity. All right, um, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 also says that his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. God, by his divine power, has given us, not will give, has already given us. We have it already. Where is it? It's inside of us. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge. So it's going to come through knowledge. You know, and we could go on, Daniel eleven thirty two 32 says, but the people that know their God shall be strong, and do exploits. So why are we not doing exploits? Because we don't have the strength to. Why are we not strong? Because we don't know God. And the knowing there is not just Bible knowledge. You know, we all did, you know, just, just, it's not BK. It's not CRK. This is revelation knowledge of who God is. This is intimate knowledge of who God is. Experiential knowledge. It's not just saying, oh, I know God. You know, someone can say, oh, yeah. You know, I know Obama. That means I've seen his picture. I've heard of him. No, knowing him, that means that you have is is when his wife says, when the wife of Obama says, I know Obama, it is definitely more deeper than just, you know, head knowledge. So we're not talking about just head knowledge, but revelation knowledge of who God is. All right, let's look at three examples of prosperity because a lot of time when we um when we when we uh, and connection with the word of God, you see these things are not just limited to just within the church circle and all of that. Let's look at David for instance. Bible says that so David marched out and prospered in everything Saul sent him out to do. He prospered. That means the word prosperity is always um is always um, used interchangeably with the word success. In the Bible, so we can say prosperity and success are the same. So the Bible said that David matched out and prospered in everything that Saul sent him out to do, and Saul set him over the men of war, and this was pleasing in the in, in the sight of all the people and of you know and, and Saul's officer as well. I always tell people that results don't lie. You know, when you find I find myself in situations whereby I'm in a company, you know, I'm black, I have an accent, I'm an immigrant. Um, I've only been in the company for a very long time and all of that. I mean, the odds are almost against you. The odds are always, the odds are almost against you. But there is not, but when this, but when, when, when they see the quality of your work, the quality of your delivery, you know, your speech, your words, your action, 
when they see it, they have no choice, you know, but to succumb. They have no choice, you know, but, to, you know, a lot of time we are praying for promotion and our focus is we are going to pray. We are, our focus is on promotion. Our focus is on God promoting rather than focusing on, you know, on prospering in the things we do, excelling in the little things that we do. All right, let's look at an example of Joseph, for instance. But I would say, meanwhile, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Um, where an Egyptian named Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard, bought him from Ishmaelites and uh, who had taken him there. So he was sold by his brothers. Very disheartening. He has just gone through. I mean, some people will have just like, that was the end. They will have just given up completely. But he had what we call, but, but you know, Joseph had beyond just, he didn't have financial, he had emotional prosperity, ability to bounce back. He was able to, he had emotional intelligence. Right, so it was so there, and verse three says, and when his master saw that the Lord was with him, and and made him prosper in all that he did, so we see that prosperity was not so much of financial, but in his work, he succeeded in everything he laid his hands to do. You know, so our prayer is that God make me a person of Lord. Let this be my reputation. Let it. Let this be. You know, let my reputation be one that is known that. You know, everything I lay, everything, let it be said concerning me that that whatever that person lays his hand on is always succeed. And, and that is the beginning of financial prosperity where people begin to realize, you know, I talked about how they ran the business and God connected me with people. It was through Rear Flowers. I'll meet one person and that person will recommend. I still spoke to someone today who is in Nigeria. I've never met him, never had a conversation. He just called me and said, I got your number from this person. You come highly recommended. And they don't, you know, you come highly recommended, you know, the quality of your work and it went on and on and on. And it's easy for, because when, when you when you are, when you have that, when you, when you are excellent at what you do, you know, it begins to draw people to you and it draws finances to you as well. You know, and that's one of the key to prosperity. And so it says, when his master saw the Lord was, he made and made him prosper in all things. Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal attendant and he put him in charge of his household and entrusted everything he had to him. Also, we see there um, Bezel and Oha, um, and o Oholia. I don't know how to pronounce it. But, you know, Bible basically said that they wanted to build a temple and they had need for people. And it was said, verse um, 32 says that, um, and the Bible said that God said, and uh, verse 31, is, and God said there, that I have filled them with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill. So these were stone cutters. These were not worshippers or, you know, but the Bible says that God gave them wisdom. He gave them understanding. He gave them knowledge in all kinds of skill. So no matter the kind of job, the nature of the job you're doing, you can receive, this is what we call supernatural intelligence. They, they you know, God gave them knowledge and wisdom in everything that they did. And, you know, so, so we can consider these guys has been very successful, you know, that, that skill, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom he had was what made them the most excellent. And out of all the people that came out of Egypt, that came out of Egypt into that, those were the ones that God told the prophet, God told Moses, go and get those guys, go and get them. You know, so shall it be, you know, and so shall it be for as many of us that desire it and connect with it, you know, and, and believe and open their hearts and say, Lord, I receive wisdom, I receive understanding, I receive revelation, even in the area. So you can you can ask God for knowledge, you know, no matter the nature of your job is. All right, so Joseph pretty much he, he prospered in business, you know, because he handled the business of Potiphar, you know, he was a household manager. At, at some point, he became second in command to Pharaoh. He, 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 you know, he had wisdom, he was excellence in economics and leadership you know um, daniel as well was i had wisdom in governance and leadership and so on and so on and so on as well so there is hope for us right all right the blessing we talked about the blessing earlier on and we said that the blessing of god is spiritual because god is a spirit you know ephesians 1 3 says that praise be uh, all praise to god the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing so the blessings of god are spiritual it says he has blessed, not he will bless us, but he has blessed us already, you know. So man is a spirit, 
He has a soul and lives in a body. And God is also a spirit. And they that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. Everything that God gives is spiritual. So he blesses, he has blessed us spiritually. So you are blessed right now, you know, but it's spiritual, right? So what is the purpose of that provision? Second Peter 1 verse 4 says, by which he has given us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this we will become partakers of his divine nature. So that is why he has given us his promises. What is the source of, of this blessing, of this provision. It says, Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, for this is not yourself, it is a gift from God. So how, how do we, how, uh, what is the source of this provision? It is grace. Grace means unmerited favor. You know, it means you don't deserve it, but God decides to give you. Now, what is the location of this provision? For by, by Philemon, Philemon 1 verse 6 says, every good thing which is in you. So God has placed them in us. Luke 6 verse 45 says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. So these blessings are inside of you. You know, all of God's abundant provision are inside of us. Now, the challenge is this. Your rent is physical. It's not spiritual. That car, you need physical money to pay for it, not spiritual money. So now we need, how can we access that spiritual blessing? How can we bring it into physical manifestation? You see, one thing we need to understand about God is that the fact that God says he has given you something, you know, there's still a requirement, there's still a part that you have to play. And we see that in Deuteronomy 1 verse 8. God said to them, see, I have given you this land. Go in and possess it. But I thought God said he had given them. So it wasn't physical, it was spiritual. I have given. So when we read the Bible and we read prosperity and the Bible says he has blessed us, it is spiritual. But we need to go, what is required of us, the next step is to possess it, to lay hold of it. Philippians 3 verse 12, Paul said, not that I've already obtained it or I've already been made part, but I press on. So there's a pressing on that is required. There is a walking out. You know, by Philippians 2 verse 12 says, continue to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. So there's a requirement from us and that is where faith comes in. That is where faith comes in. But I would say that faith substances the things we hope for. In other words, faith brings into physical manifestation the things that we hope for. We said earlier on that those blessings are spiritual. How can we bring them into the natural manifestation? How can we receive those things that God has given to us in the spiritual realm by faith? It is true faith. Faith substances. It brings into physical manifestation the things that we hope for. You know, it brings it. So faith enables us to also access those things that God has given to us spiritually that are not yet made physical. So they are not yet made physical, but through faith, we can bring them into, we can receive them, we can bring them into physical manifestation. All right. The Bible says that for it's by grace you have been saved through faith. So two things, grace and faith. So God has provided to you by grace. It means you don't deserve it. But for you to receive them, you need faith. So faith is how we receive what God has given. So God has done his own part. He has given, he has blessed us. God sees us as being blessed already, but we need to release our faith. We need to activate our faith. We need to release our faith. We need to, so basically, we need to release and activate our faith in order for us to receive this thing. Let's look at an example of faith here. Mark 5, 25, part, um, the woman with issue of blood. Bible says that a certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years had suffered many things from many physicians and she had spent all that she had. Then Bible said, then she heard of Jesus. Mark number one, she heard. And, it, and she, but when she heard of Jesus, came in and pressed behind him. So she did some. So number one, she heard. Now she not did, she heard there also means that she understood. You know, she had been, she had spent all the money she had she was sick, so she heard that Jesus could heal. She understood that Jesus had the power to heal. She didn't just say, but she understood something that she what she needed to do. The Bible says that she pressed behind him and touched the garment, for she had said, for she said, if I may touch the helm of his clothes, I shall be made whole. So what did she hear? She had the revelation knowledge from God about what she needed to do. Now, she beyond just hearing, if she stayed at home, she would not have received that blessing. But she pressed on further to do what? To receive. So basically, we are saying that everyone that has received something by faith did these five things. Number one, they heard something. It's not in any particular order. 
they heard something. They believed what they heard. Then they said something. The Bible says, for she said. They understood what they heard. And they did something. You see, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That second hearing is understanding. So, no matter what I was saying, faith comes by hearing. So, the first thing, they heard something. Faith comes by understanding the word of God. When you hear, now, for instance, I'm speaking, right? And you are hearing me. So speaking, when you when you speak, you are hearing. So we can say that faith comes by speaking and faith comes by hearing. By hearing what? The word of God. Now, the word of God there is actually the word rema, which means the spoken word of God. So faith really is believing God for what he has said. What and Because that is what God is committed to. So when you're praying about your, when, when, when you're at, when you're believing God for, you know, wealth and increase and all of that or promotion, the first thing is, God, what are you saying about this situation? You need to go and hear from God. God, speak to me because God is only committed to that which he has told you that he will do. You know, so number one, they heard something. Number two, she believed. They believe you, they must be believing, must, you know, must follow. So um, Hebrews 11, 6 and says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone that comes to God must believe, must, important. So faith is not believing. Believing is not faith. Faith requires believing. And we are talking about the dynamics of faith. So believing is a part of faith. And so the, you must believe that God exists. That's number one. And that is not enough. Believing that God exists doesn't solve your problem. But you must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that diligently seek him. So you must believe that God, God, can, God can prosper or God can, God can make someone prosper. But you must also believe that God wants to prosper you. You must believe that God has blessed us. But you must believe that God wants to bless you. You know, also, so believing is important. Number three, asking. Asking is where prayer comes in. The Bible says that if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God. If you lack wisdom, ask God. If you lack whatever it is you lack, ask God. Who gives generously? So God is a generous God. He's a generous. So why are we asking? Because he's generous. Why do we go to why do we go to generous people to ask them for things? Because they are generous people and they will give us. You see, but it says you want um you must he will give generously to all without finding fault. What is that scripture saying? It means that God does not look for an excuse not to give us. Remember, we said that the source of those provisions is grace. Grace means unmerited favor. So when you go to God and ask for a thing, right? God is not going to ask, does this person deserve it? God doesn't ask that question because that's what grace is all about, you know, and then there's mercy. It means that you've done wrong, you know, and I'm going to forgive you. And and this is uh, this, but this is for children of God. But all the all the same, why not? Grace is not Bible says grace is not an excuse to sin. Grace actually encourages encourages you to love God more and more. So it says that um, ask God who gives generously without finding fault, and it will be given to you. All right. Um, faith also involves speaking. All right, um, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, And since we have the spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore, I have spoken. I believe, therefore, I spoke. I believe, therefore, so you're, there must be a connection between what you're saying and what you believe. Faith cannot be quiet. You know, Mark eleven twenty three says, I say to whatever you say to this mountain, notice, say, you must say, you must address that, you must say to the mountain, be that removing that cast, but you say you must, you must believe that what you are saying, you must believe in what you are saying, and then you will have it. So when you pray, you believe, you know, you believe that what you're so you start by saying, you know, it might be a confession or a declaration, but also you must believe it, and it must also you must declare it. But I'm saying that uh, Romans 10, verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's not enough to just believe. You must add corresponding action to what you believe by speaking and declaring the word of God. And we add, come to the very last one, action. Action, by talking about the dynamics of faith. Bible says that even so, if faith without works is dead, the works there refer to corresponding action. The work there is not what qualifies you to receive those things. We said what qualifies us is the grace of God, but there's a corresponding action that is required from you and I. 
I remember some years ago uh, uh, in church, a, a prophet, a prophetess was invited and she came and she called five. She said that there are five people here. Five, uh, five of you are into IT or she called all the IT. Anyone that's into IT in this church, come forward. And five of us came out and she said, you guys are going to be wealthy. You are going to be millionaires. God is going to bless you. You are going that. And she told the entire church, watch out for these guys. These guys are going to be millionaires. But she said something very powerful. She said, some of you might need to go to school. Some of you might need to go and learn some course. Some of you might need to go and improve yourself. Some of you might need to go. And she began to mention a list of things that is required of us in order to tap to receive that thing. See, the Bible said that faith does not work alone. Faith must be backed up by corresponding action. So when we pray to God and we ask for that, one of the things you want to ask God for is for corresponding action. God, what do I need to do? You know, Pastor Boye, Pastor Deboye prayed one powerful prayer. He said, may God show you what you need to do to get what you want to, what you need. May God reveal to you what you need to do to get what you want. Because a lot of times the things you want is connected to you doing something, corresponding action. All right, so how do we receive these people by, how, how do we receive these things by faith, I'm rounding up right now. Number one, pray. Persist in prayer. Keep praying and asking, even when there's a delay. Number two, pray with faith and patience. The Bible says that follow those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Number three, pray with thanksgiving. You know, pray with gratitude in your heart. Thank him. Say, Lord, I thank you because you have blessed me. And I'm teaching us how to pray. Lord, I thank you because you have blessed me already. Lord, I know that I, might, I may be experiencing a delay right now. I might not have all that I need right now. But Lord, I thank you for the ones that I, you have given me already. You know, so number two, you must also believe and trust God. Believe his promises. Say, God, I thank you for your promises. Trust in abundance. You must believe in abundance. Believe that God has abundant resources, God has abundant provision, and God has made those provisions available to you. You know, So this is how to receive things by faith, and this includes prosperity. Trust in the faithfulness of God. Begin, Lord, I know you are faithful. I thank you because you are faithful. I might not be where I'm supposed to be right now, but God, you are a faithful God. Trust in divine connection. Trust in, believe that God will connect you to the right people. Say, Father, I thank you because you will connect me to the right people. You will connect me to people that will help me to accomplish, to achieve my goal. Then trust in the goodness of God. Believe that God is good. When bad things happen, don't be quick to, 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 to assume that it is God that is bringing that evil. But trust God. You know, uh, also seek the presence of God. Seek spiritual guidance. Meditate on the word of God. Take time to study the word of God. The Bible said that when you meditate, that you will make your way prosperous. Study, you know, the Bible says, study to show that self approved unto God. Um, also, there's gratitude and praise. Practice gratitude. There is giving and generos generosity. Share what you have with others. Give with a cheerful heart. There's also faithfulness. Practice faithfulness. Be faithful in the little things that God has given you. The little things that God has entrusted, be faithful faithful with it. Do it with all your heart. Put everything into it. A couple of years ago, I came into this country. You know, I had a business, came into this country. I had to start from scratch. The first, the job, the first job I got was a patient transporter, pushing wheelchair. I was coming. I told myself, God, I'm going to be the best patient transporter in the whole of this hospital. I committed myself. I'm going to be the best patient transporter in this, I had my IT degree. I applied for IT, you know, jobs in the in in, uh, in Duke University. They didn't offer. Them. They didn't even call me back. I didn't even hear from HR. But while I was pushing these patients, one day I was faithfully just pushing this patient and just you know treating them like a customer, like the same way I would treat my business customers and all of that. You know, it's, it was it took interest in me. He said, "You speak very well. You seem like a very intelligent person." You know, you know, and I told him, I told him a bit about myself. He said, what are you doing, doing this job? I said, this is entry. This is a foot in the, a, a foot in the door for me. That the easiest way for me to get to where I'm going to is to start by doing something, you know? So I'm doing this so that I can get to where I need to do. And I need to, I have a family to feed and I have to do what I need to, to get to where I need to go to. And this guy said, wow, that is impressive. He said, give me your email address. Give me your phone number. And he sent an email directly to the head of the IT department. The next thing I got an email, I was called for an interview, and the rest is history. Six years in Duke, 
progressing, excelling, you know, and doing great things by the grace of God. But he started with just being faithful with that small assignment. So be persistent in faith as well. You know, every time around while I was walking around the hospital, I kept making declaration. A lot of times I would fast and pray and take time. I would see the IT folks walking around and I began to see myself, you know, doing the things they were doing. I began to see myself in the department. I trusted God for divine connection. I prayed for divine connection. I said, God, you will connect me to the person that is going to help me to get to where I need to get to. I was persistent. I was committed. I showed up at work every day and God did it. Finally, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit will guide you. Listen to his direction. Seek spiritual guidance. And seek guidance in finance as well. You know, talk to people. Learn about financial management as well. Believe God for abundance. Pray for it. You know, shout and say, Lord, I receive abundance. It is the will of God. Believe for miracle. Believe God to do miraculous things in your life. Believe God for sudden provision. You know, believe God for supernatural provision. We've seen examples in, in the Bible. Trust God for it. Believe for multiple blessings, multiple streams of income. Don't just put all your, you know, believe God for income from all kinds of different angles, different places. Hallelujah. Um, time is up, um, but I don't know if anyone has a question or a quick contribution um, before I hand over to the moderators, but I just want to release a quick blessing, a quick prayer in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Father, I ask of God that you will grant you, Lord, Lord, thank you for wisdom, oh God. Thank you for wisdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you for supernatural intelligence, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for as many your word says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously, O God. Father God, I release wisdom. I release grace, O God. Father God, upon your people in the name of Jesus. That wisdom that will cause them to excel. Grace that will cause them to excel beyond measure in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyway, I don't know if anyone has a question or a contribution. Uh, if not, I'm handing over to the moderators, but... Um, bless. Thank you all for listening. Um, God bless you. Anyone has a question before I hand over? All right. Thank you all.